It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're going to compare and contrast various things that were done by Socrates, as written down by Plato, to various elements of the New Testament. When it comes down to Plato, we do know that he was born roughly around 428 through 7 BCE and that he died at 81 years old at roughly around 348 or 47 BCE. And when it comes down to Paul, he was born roughly around 5 AD and he died around 64 or 65 AD. Because many of the works of Socrates was done by Plato, he's our primary source when it comes down to information about the life of Socrates because outside the works of Plato, we have no idea what exactly did Socrates really said or didn't say because during his lifetime, he did not write a single biography about his personal life. We also know through the book that's called Forward by Bart Ehrman that many of the letters that are actually attributed to Paul are actually considered to be forgeries in academia. This comes directly from chapter 3 which says forgeries in the name of Paul. Virtually all scholars agree that seven of the Pauline letters are authentic. The other six different and significant ways from this core group of seven, three of them, 1st and 2nd Timothy, are so alike that most scholars are convinced that they are written by the same person. The other three are usually assigned to three different authors. Besides the fact that we have no idea what exactly Socrates really said, we also have no idea what really Jesus said during his lifetime because there is no such historical records that's like an autobiography that demonstrate that any of the stuff that's attributed to Jesus is actually really the word of Jesus. So what exactly are the similarities between the various works of Plato and the New Testament? Let's begin right here. Socrates proceeded, I thought that I have fall into the contemplament of true existence. I ought to be careful that I do not lose the eye of my soul, as people may injure their bodily eye by observing and glazing on the sun during an eclipse, unless they take precaution of only looking at the image reflected in the water or in some similar medium. That occurred to me. And I was afraid that my soul must be blinded altogether if I looked at thing with my eyes or try by the help of my senses to apprehend them. And I thought that I would better have recourse to ideas and seek them the truth of existence. I dare to say that a smile is not perfect for I am very much far away from admitting that he who contemporaries existence through the medium ideas see them only through a glass darkly. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 For I now see through a glass darkly, then face to face, now I am in part, but I shall know even as I am known. When it comes down to the ancient world, the deification of historical figures was quite common. What was also very much common back then was that many of these deities were born directly from miraculous conceptions. There are plenty of examples within Greek mythology where Zeus go ahead and violate many women in order to, of course, have kiss with them. And so what exactly are the similarities and differences between the miraculous conception of Jesus Christ and the miraculous conception of Plato? Habitude of body gave a surname to Plato, for he was first called Asterisk, and his father is said to be called Estro. For his father Astro drew his origins from Neptune through Codrus, and his maternal blood was divine from the most wise Solon, who was the founder of the Atlas Laws. There were also those who relate that Plato descended from a, a more august conception, since a certain specter of Apollo had connection with a parishron. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privately. 
But while he stood on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared upon him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take upon thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. See that none render evil for evil upon any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourself and to all men. So what exactly does Socrates say? Then we must do no wrong, certainly not, nor when injure, injure in return, as many imagine, for we must injure no one at all, surely not. Again, maybe we do evil, surely not, and what of doing evil in return for evil, for which the morality of the many, is that just or not? Not just, for doing evil to another is the same as injurium, very true, then we ought not to retaliate or render evil for evil for anyone, whatever evil may have suffered from him. Paul says, And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, that filleth all in all. Plato says, First then the gods, imitating the spiritual shape of the universe, enclose the two divine courses in a spiritual body, that namely, which now term the head, being the most divine part of us, and the Lord of all that is in us. To this is the gods, when he put together the body, gave all members to be the servants, considering that it took part of every sort of motion. Paul says, For I thought I preach the gospel. I have nothing to glory for necessarily to lay upon me. Yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. Plato says, After this, I went to one man after another, not being unconscious of the enemy which I provided, and I landed and feared this, but necessary was laid upon me. The word of God, I thought, ought to be considered first, and I said to myself, Go, I must to all to appear to know, and find the meaning of the oracle, and I swear to you, by the dark I swear, for I must tell you the truth, the result of my mission was just this. Paul says, For I am ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Plato says, But now the time has come to go away. I go to die, and you to live. But which of us goes in a better lot is known to none but God. Paul says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Plato wrote down, Now if death is like this, I say that to die is gain, for eternity is then only a single night. But if death is the journey to another place, and dare as men say, all men are what good. Paul says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may attain. Plato wrote down, But such are true racers, arriving at the end, both receive the prizes and are crowded. Paul says that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Plato writes down the cities whose state is most like an individual man. For example, if the finger of one of us is wounded, the entire community of bodily connection, squashing to the soul for integration, with the dominant part is made aware, and all of it feel the pain as a whole, there is a part that suffers, then is how we come to say that man has pain in his fingers. And for any other member of the man, the same statement holds, likewise, a part that labors in pain and is eased by pleasure. The same, he said, and to return to your question, the best governed state must nearly resemble such an organism. Paul says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Plato says, It would not by Zeus be all strange, said I, for now that you mention it, it occurred to me myself that to begin with, our civil natures are not alike but different. One man is naturally fitted for one task and another for another, don't you think so? Paul says, And if any man thinks that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet he is ought to know. And finally from Plato about Socrates. For my part, as I went away, I reasoned with regard to myself. I am wiser than this human being, 
for probably none of us know anything noble and good, but he supposes that he knows something when he does not know, while I, just as I do not know, do not even suppose that I do. I am likely to be a little bit wiser than he in this very thing, that whatever I do not know, I do not even suppose to know. Those are my personal examples on when Paul used elements of Plato and Socrates for his philosophy. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.